Thousands of people turned out in the nation's capital today. They were calling for comprehensive immigration reform. Demonstrators calling for amnesty for illegal immigrants and demanding that Congress act now to pass legislation. They were led by one of those congressmen. Congressman Luis Gutierrez addressed the crowd and he outlined what he called principles for a comprehensive immigration reform bill. Smaller rallies were held in some cities around the country. President Obama has promised a comprehensive immigration reform legislation, but no timetable and every indication that it won't be soon. Uh, joining me now, political editor for the Washington Examiner, Chris Starwalt. Good to have you with us, Chris. Editor at large, senior political analyst for Time Magazine, Mark Halpern. Good to have you with us, Mark. Syndicated columnist, CNN contributor, and professor at Lehman College, Miguel Perez. Miguel, good to have you with us. Well, Miguel, let's let's start with uh, Luis Gutierrez and his vigil. Um, is the fight to join now? I, I support the congressman and in his efforts to uh, to get some kind of comprehension, uh, comprehensive immigration reform passed. Uh, unfortunately, the climate, the atmosphere right now is not very conducive to that. Health care reform has held us back, has pushed immigration reform at least until next year. And I don't know if Obama is going to be able to keep up, keep all his promises to the immigrant and minority communities regarding health immigration reform because of the fact that the atmosphere has been poisoned now by health care reform. As I told you last week, Lou, uh, the situation is now if you leave out of health care reform immigrants, then later on when you try to pass immigration reform, there, there's going to be a price tag on them. They're going to be able to say, oh, we cannot allow these people to come in because now it's going to cost us so much more to give them health care. Uh, Mark, do you, do you think that Miguel has a point there, that the, that, uh, the debate has been poisoned by new information? <laughs> well, I think that that tough issue of any benefits for immigrants uh, as part of reform, it, it was going to be there whether they did health care first or not. I think immigration reform, like so much else of the Obama agenda, will depend on what happens with health care, both in terms of whether he has momentum out of the passage of an historic large bill to show he can get things done, and also how much the country is poisoned or not in a partisan way. Because if he passes health care with just Democratic votes or Democrats plus Maine Senator Olympia Snow, doing comprehensive immigration reform in a partisan way is impossible. And he needs to get Republicans, however health care ends, he needs to get Republicans to agree to work with him. Right now, I think that's an open question. Is the same true of health care reform, that he needs more Republicans? I think he would be wise to find a way to get them, but I think it's too late. I think the Republicans are in a reflexive crouch against anything he does, even though a lot of Republicans would be for 80 percent of what's passed today. Well, with that answer, you sort of inflate the importance of Republicans. His principal opposition has come from Democrats, has it not? Right. I mean, the, the whole issue here all along has been, can the president bring discipline to his own party? Can he get the job done with Democrats? He's had 60 votes. Well, for a minute, he had 59. But he's had 60 votes in the Senate. He's had the supermajority in Congress. The whole question has been, can he bring his stamp to the Democratic Party? And can he bring the rest of members of Congress into line? We still don't know that. We still don't know that by a long shot. Uh, Miguel, the, the idea that, uh, as you suggest, poisoning the debate on health uh, care, uh, I mean, poisoning the debate on uh, immigration reform because we now know what the health care costs would be, or at least we have a, a suggestion of it. Uh, what, what is the rush here uh, for health care reform as we look at it? Uh, there, there seems to, there seems to have been even in the media move. today. There was a rush of report that it was passed by the Senate. It was a, a committee that passed it. We're hyping this thing too much. Look, this thing has to go through a process still. It, 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 we're going to be, we're going to be needing reconciliation counseling, all of us, because it's going to be reconciliated and reconciliating. Look, uh, if if there's one thing that I hope comes out of this is that whatever health care plan we have, it includes mental health, because we're all going to need mental health care. We're going to be right back with our panel. Give us uh, just a moment. Uh, we're going to take just a moment for a little light counseling. We'll be right back. <laughs> Having a child with diabetes, I'm nervous about her going away, but I know she wants to be able to do things on her own. The Bayer Meter helps me become more independent. Only Bayer's Contour Meter has programmable personal high-low settings. The high and low setting gives you a good idea of where your blood sugar is at and what you need to do to control it. The Bayer Meter will give me peace of mind. I want you to be happy. <laughs> Don't cry. My name is Sunny, and independence is my simple win. The Contour Meter, only from Bayer.
sign of a good decision. In the world of personal finance, it's mass mutual. Find strength and stability in a company that's owned by its policyholders. Ask your advisor or visit massmutual.com. Thinking about mutual funds? Think about this. The best place to buy one may not be a mutual fund company at all. Instead of emphasizing their funds, TD Ameritrade has tools that can help you choose funds from the leading fund companies. There's even a recommended list by the independent experts at Morningstar Associates, so you can get a fund that matches your objectives instead of someone else's. Before investing, consider the fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Contact TD Ameritrade for a prospectus containing this and other information. Read it carefully before investing. CNN Next, a Campbell Brown special. What if you could rewire your brain? A Campbell Brown special. CNN coming up next. Are you... At the heart of any medical organization are the medical assistants. Providing support and attention, they keep the process running efficiently. It did start with a phone call. The medical field always looked exciting to me. The training was great, and before I knew it, I was out doing the work. It's hard to explain, but there's something really satisfying about knowing that your work benefits so many others on a daily basis. This was the right choice for me. Call Lincoln Technical Institute at 800-327-1158. Welcome to Sparrow Wine and Liquor Company, Hudson County's premier wine and spirit merchant. We stock over 2,000 expertly selected wines, as well as the largest spirit and beer selection in the county. Our two convenient locations in Hoboken are just minutes away, and free parking is available at our shipyard location. Can't make it into Sparrow? We deliver throughout the county and most of northern New Jersey. Call for live help from one of our expert associates. Shop Sparrow Wine and Liquor Company at our flagship store at the shipyard or a convenient Washington Street location in downtown Hoboken. You'd be surprised how good your wine can be. Another day cheating death. CNN Saturday and Sunday night, 8 Eastern. Violence in Afghanistan is, is worsening, it seems, daily. Uh, this is already the deadliest year of this conflict for U.S. forces. Uh, the president says we're weeks away from a decision by the commander-in-chief. Uh, your thoughts? No, the question is why are we weeks away? Because, you know, he's getting all the information he needs from the commanders on the field. They're telling him that they need support right now, not weeks away. And a lot of people keep asking themselves, why is this president sending out these messages to the rest of the world that is indecisive on this crucial issue? Mark? It's a lot of meetings, although I don't think it's necessarily fair for someone in uh, television news or journalism to complain that it's hard to reach decisions without having a lot of meetings because... He's being thoughtful. He's hearing from a lot of different people. It's a little strange that they have to have the meetings be so public and take so long, but I think he recognizes how big a decision this is, and he doesn't want to make a mistake. Do you think that's the principal criticism, that, that he's holding meetings and taking so long? I think in the interim, because the media tends to be obsessed with process, I think we're seeing a vigorous debate, and the range of advice we know he's getting uh, from Vice President Biden, who proposes a rapid scaling down, to General McChrystal, who would like a very big buildup, that, those are big options that are not just substantive and tactical, but they've got symbolic importance. I don't think he wants to be seen as cutting and running. I think he's got sympathy for scaling down the mission, but I think he wants to do it in a way that preserves the new mission and its chances of success and not be seen as a Democratic president who has cut from a conflict. That, during most of our lives, our adult lives and our professional careers, has been a big threat for any president, particularly for a Democrat. Uh, how so? Uh, which Democrat cut and ran? Well, there was concern about for Bill Clinton uh, in, in every conflict he was involved in. In Bosnia, there was concern. Uh, but, he, he, but he was a stalwart and actually well, held, he was, he but held part, constant but, policy. But, and actually achieve results, but, uh, but in but in what, but in but part, I'm, but in part because he was. But what I'm really about asking that. is: this yeah. not a shibboleth, this cut and run uh, 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 specter for the Democratic uh, Party uh, and its president? Well, it's been more of a criticism, not of Democratic presidents, but of Democratic presidential candidates like John Kerry, yeah. uh, like Michael Dukakis, and I think again he he is stepping up into a world where he wants to. This is his test of what kind of use of American force he will project around the world. Could, would it be helpful at all if we all got down on our hands and knees and prayed that he would make a principled decision not based either on public uh, uh, perception and PR 
and party politics, I don't but think just simply for the I, good I don't of think the it's nation. wrong to say for any president that this is part of a principled decision. You have to preserve America's the place sense, in the world. One gets the sense with this administration, though, that they are looking for the political window to jump out of. They're waiting. They're buying time, just as, as they have on other issues. They're buying time to find the opportunity that they can try to spin whatever their decision is as something that's a compromise or a moderate choice or an in-between moment that they're going to do. And I think the sense that they're laying out from all of these meetings that they're having is we're heading for uh, a compromise answer, not the McChrystal plan and not the Biden plan. And I think the president's just buying time until he can find a way to present that to the American people that doesn't cause the kind of concern that Mark talked about, which is that you're cutting and running. He's looking for, I think, cover now. The question is if they're looking for that political window and they are going to jump out, how high is the building and how, how much will they crash? The drop? You use the word, Mark, mission and the change in the mission. Most Americans can't find any articulation of a mission or a strategy. Uh, and we're now past eight years since the beginning of this war. Um, how soon do you think, he said weeks, how soon do we really believe it will be before we have an articulation of a strategy and a statement, a declarative statement from a president that where our troops are committed, we will hear about victory. Before you're asked if you want uh, marshmallows in your um, in your sweet potatoes, Thanksgiving. I, uh, I it seems far fetched to me. I don't think victory is going to come into this discussion. I don't think this is going to be a victory kind of White House. Uh, I think the original Obama mission, the March mission, uh, was a nation building plan, stabilizing Pakistan plan. But I don't think you're going to hear about winning Afghanistan. If we're not there to win. What are we there to do? To keep the Taliban out of power, yeah. which is very important to us. Yeah. And, and it can be done with fewer forces and with, and with less of a strain, not only on the military overall, but the threat of America's credibility. I remember the fellow by the name of Rumsfeld saying something very similar about that in a different place altogether. Mark, <laughs> thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Miguel. And Chris, thank you. Coming up at the top of the hour, Campbell Brown. Campbell